shall we begin? Let's go for it. Let's go. Okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. Um, we are going to speak to you every week about different topics in swimming. Hopefully, you are a existing listener, but if you are a new one, welcome. Hello, I'm Scott. This is Dan. How you doing? As Thanks. always, very chatty. Come on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so every Thursday yeah. on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube, we are going to, like I mentioned, talk through different topics in swimming, give them a good debate between the two of us. Yes, yep. Um, and generally give advice and exposure to swimming. Yes. Well, we've got quite a big topic again today. Yeah. So yeah. as if you're watching on YouTube, as you can see around our set here, we have different pieces of swimming equipment set up. We do. We have a kick float over there. Yep. Uh, a kick bag and some goggles right above me. Yes. So this week we are actually going to discuss which swimming equipment you shall need for training, competitive or just starting up. Yep. Um, but also which pieces of equipment, I'm not going to say which, should stay on the wall because we, we are firmly against one of these pieces of equipment. We well, are, I I, yes. I, I am. Uh, no, I completely agree with you. Okay. Yep. And we'll get on to that later on. Well, that's one of the last... Yeah. Objects or pieces so of equipment, yeah. we are battling through Storm Dennis, so again, like last week, sorry if there is any wind caught up on the microphones, yes, it well, is a horrible day outside. It is horrible. Scott's got his hot, uh, hot water bottle behind him, so mm. he's nice and cushy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, should we, should we crack on? Let's go for let's, it. What's let's the first one? So, first piece of swimming equipment that Dan's given me to start yep. things off is something I use to help myself go faster in sessions a lot, is fins. Yes. So I use them mainly as a sprinter to kind of keep race pace and keep keep the speed high. But Dan actually yes. has a different use for them when training techniques or doing most of our tutorials you'll see on YouTube. I like doing a lot of drills, if not all drills, maybe apart from brush rock, obviously. <laughs> doing, <laughs> That'd be fun. Yeah, <laughs> doing, using fins whilst doing every drill. Because so, it helps, it does help keep the body position up, and like you say, it does make you go faster in the water. So you're kind of replicating race, race pace water. speed whilst in the drill. Yeah. Yeah. So most of yeah. the drills will probably slow you down. They really should slow you down to help drills you should be done slowly. Concentrate, yeah. but that that kick helps. The kick using fins helps you keep your like Dan said, body position really high in the water, which is really key. Yes, yeah. So a lot of videos we actually see on YouTube or Facebook when we comment on them. Is yep. people showing us that they've done this drill? Like, have we done it right? I'm like, yeah, the the, the upper body part of the drill looks yes, great, yeah. but you're you're kind of dragging your legs a lot. Yeah. So if you are a weaker swimmer, fins is really beneficial for that. They do help with um, so like you have proper breaststroke ankle problems, don't you? Okay, yeah. They yeah. do help with loosening the ankle off as well. So Sorry. you get you know to get the standards. I don't know if you've ever seen like sort of kids they stand with their feet or their toes facing outwards. And they just constantly have like a look like an egg beater sort of kick when they try and do front crawl or freestyle kick. Uh, by having fins, it actually loosens off the ankle as well and tries to get the range of movement oh, going. That's interesting. So that's another thing. That. Yeah, that's okay. another thing for you. Um, um, but there's a, another side of it is doing the training side. If you're trying yeah. to improve leg strength, then fins, because of the, the um, surface area is bigger, there's a bit more resistance to try and get your feet or legs through the water. Yeah, I, so there's I, another side of it I as well. I remember always getting nice shin splints after a certain while of. Yeah, kicking my fins on. I actually had to wear socks because my feet, uh, fins would rub on my feet. <laughs> it's horrible. You're such a wimp. There was so I had so many mouldy socks in the. Oh, kit bag, yeah. oh. In the, anyway, uh, <laughs> he, ha he, ha <laughs> he has improved his hygiene nowadays. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this is another a piece of equipment that can help with drills. Yep. And we try and use it in our training. So I definitely do in my training sessions now. Is a snorkel. Oh, yes, yeah, snorkels. Yeah, so very how good. can snorkels be beneficial to people? Um, I would use it mainly for freestyle drills yep. or freestyle just swimming in general because then you don't have to worry about the breathing and turning your head to the side. You know? So it, it you helps can, you keep balance during a drill? It does, yes, yeah, and it makes you, your body alignment straighter. Okay. That's what I'd do, um, or the way it works anyway. Um, and I think it's helpful for sprinters as well. So sprinters can do all the drills using the fins and the snorkel and keep the speed up whilst not turning to the side because on a 50 yeah, meter kind sprint of, they, yeah, don't, I was gonna they say, don't breathe it replicates kind of race yeah. that's conditions. what drills are about drills are about replicating what you would do in a race yeah again and we'll give them another plug energy standard james gibson you follow their instagram mm. every session they'll have the snorkel on and fins yeah. yeah so one problem i found with snorkels is actually you concentrate too much on the breathing because 
for mm. me, I don't know if this happens to anyone else, all of the water tends to go up my nose when I'm using a snorkel. See, I'm not that used to snorkels. I never really used to use them being a bit of more of a distant swimmer. Yeah. Probably should have done bind. But, so, um, so, yeah, a piece I know of equi- so a piece of equipment that could probably go with a snorkel is probably a nose clip. A nose clip, it, yeah. It's a lot of backstrokers I'll, do this as well. Yeah, it's something I've invested mm. in because you're using the snorkel to really concentrate on the drill. But in essence, for me... When I use a snorkel, it takes mm. away concentration. Yeah, I, I remember I had to try and force breathe. You yeah. know, when I use it in training, you kind of yeah. you can hear me breathing yeah. through it because I'm having to go and properly force yeah. the, the breath out and in. So the idea of the snorkel isn't to concentrate on breathing as such. No, it's to no. kind of to take that away. So if you are struggling with a snorkel, get a nose clip as well. I, yeah. I'd recommend doing that. Yes, yeah. Um, so another thing you mentioned previously yep. about fins improving power. Uh-huh. So these two items go together, a pool boy and paddles. Uh, yes, okay then. So should we say, with, let's go with paddles, because that's, again, it can Increasing. be worked with strength as well. Yeah, so you used to have some amazing dustbin lid paddles. That's what the old yeah. coach used to say. <laughs> when, I, when I turned up at Gloss, he was like, what, kind of, what paddles are those? about the size of your they head. Were, they were massive, they were literally <laughs> this size. And uh, I just thought they were great, because you could feel the water better. It gave me a better catch and stronger you know, lap muscles to do the drive. Uh, phase of the pool you like to think it gave you bigger muscles well yeah i mean i'm a bit bit skinny now yeah (laughs) so so why would people use paddles and kind of when in a training session would you use them uh mainly i would use paddles to get the feel of the water better okay yeah so it's much like the fins you get a bigger surface area Mm. and so you can actually feel the water better oh that's interesting with the drive of the, uh, the catch part of the pool and the pool phase and the dry phase so that's the main reason because there's different types of paddles you can have the big ones that i had then you can kind of get hand sized ones and then you can get like little finger ones as well do you know what i'm learning i'm learning things every time we do this podcast oh there you go because paddles for me was always a chance to show off the gym work and just power through the walls i had no idea it was about catch Really? No, no idea. Wow. Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah, uh, I've, 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 I've yeah. been in the dark. Yeah. Yes. Very so, much. So, so it's yeah. to stop you slipping through the water. Really. Yes. Yeah. Oh man, I, should I mean, you're doing, you're doing a very good job if you can actually have paddles and then slip through the water. That's mm. actually it shows a little bit of weakness as well. Yeah, that's very interesting. Mm. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. So I don't know. I I used to have like the big paddles that you said, um, only because I felt better in the water. And a lot of it comes down to mentality. And, and I did have the little finger paddles and they just didn't really, they didn't work for me. Although they might work for some of you guys, but not, it didn't work for me. And, and I can testify, he doesn't slip through the water at all. No. <laughs> so, so using paddles really is a beneficial. I did slip yeah. through the water every now and again, probably because I was using paddles wrong. Uh, prop by sound of things, yeah. 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 Okay. You've got to keep your wrist quite strong and actually kind of relax your hand. Yeah. I was told this when I went was I was, um, in the Cardiff Elite Squad. And one of the first things they said was to relax your hand because I was very stiff pulling through the water. And you said if you have a, st- a stiff hand, you actually only engage in the forearm muscles. Okay. But if you relax your hand, you're actually engaging the bigger muscles in your lap. I thought, again, yeah. learning everything. I thought that was interesting. Wow. So I, I, as soon as he told me that, I tried and I was like, oh, a bit oh. sore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, after a couple of weeks, it got better. And then, yeah, there you are. All oh, right. Okay. So I definitely use paddles. A lot, actually. Maybe not as much as fins, but you can obviously mix and match all these pieces of yeah, so together. Yeah, mi- so mixing and matching. I mentioned pool boys. So yes, paddles, yeah. in my experience, paddles were you're usually used in a pool set. Yes, yeah. And to complete a pool set without your hips dropping, you kind of need a pool boy. Uh, so. Yes, so the, the pool boy helps in that respect, keeping your hips up and isolating your arms, if you like. Um, you can, Does it stop rotation maybe a little bit? Yeah. But it's, it, not to the extent of it's not worth having in your kit bag, yeah. I would say. I'll definitely keep it in your kit bag. Yeah, so that's one problem I found when I was using a pool boy because mm. I, I quite like to rotate quite a lot in my freestyle, yeah, yeah. is you start to snake slightly. You definitely do on backstroke. Have you ever done, done backstroke yes. pool? Yeah. I, it just didn't work for me. I just, yeah. I'm not sure if I was strong enough on the, the drive phase of the pool. But um, yeah, I found myself snaking on backstroke pool. So I never actually ended up doing it because I thought it, was, it wasn't beneficial for me. So, but freestyle I, yeah. pool, I, you can, especially if you extend properly, you can rotate to a degree. Yeah, I, properly, think, I think. I think pool boys, it's it's not always bigger is better. No, no. It's, it's kind of just something to help you float, just to keep just your hips on the surface still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there is another item to go with a pool boy. It's kind of a, it's something you used a lot, which is just a band to keep your ankles kind of in the same position, so your feet don't cross over. 
why you're uh, yes it. again good with bad in in terms of if you keep your feet together then isolates the pawn you don't need to do any extra kick but then it does affect the rotation a little bit your hips start to sway a little bit more because you haven't quite got that extra balance okay so you really feet, need you know? a lot of core stability to use them yes yeah, yeah yeah so it's kind of pool boys are used with caution I think so. Yeah. yeah. Make make sure your coaches are keeping an eye on your technique mm. and make sure you're not swaying through the water. Yeah. And so if, I mean, if you are, just take it off. It's not going to be that. Yeah. I probably wouldn't have a band. Okay. From previous experience. Right. That's what I would say. Pool boys, yes. I'd definitely have so a pool boy. So if you wouldn't have a band, why did you, in the show notes, tell me to include pool boy and band? Because... Right. It's something that I tried, and I'm trying to advise others. Especially oh, okay, so this yeah. okay, so this is yeah. where it's not everything we'd advise. Oh yeah, I've no, got you. I've yeah, got you. gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of technique-based pieces of equipment that you can use. Yes, that's that covered. Yep. Your everyday. Well, should we just race through these? These are quite simple. These are simple. Go on. Hat, goggles, and water bottle. Yes. Well, should we start with water bottle? That's probably one of the most key pieces of equipment you need if yep. it classes as equipment you know um so they it say should just be attached to you at all times as a swimmer yeah let's be they, they say is it one liter you should drink one liter in one hour i think Pass. that's 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 all i've heard anyway is that when you're training swimming yes yeah. okay so not just walking around oh not not just in general right. they say is it eight cups of water i don't know how much that is mind but okay. yeah two liters in two hours right it's supposed to get through and that's actually quite tough to do so when you were training in cardiff yeah. If, if we haven't mentioned. Um, <laughs> did you go to sessions kind of with more than one water bottle? Because I know your sessions there would have been really intense, two hours long. Would you have two big water bottles with you just in case? I you... always had one on poolside, so yep. next to the kit bag when I was swimming. And then if that ran out, then I did have a backup in the bag. Okay. Just, it's difficult I... with, if you're doing like a long aerobic set where there's not much rest, you really don't have time. If you've got ten, five to ten seconds rest... It's very difficult to then finish, have a drink, and then go again. It's quite yeah. kind of, yeah. So also if I did it. have the backup if it was there. Yeah. yeah, okay. And I did go to it often. Yeah. 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 I, the only reason I mention that is because um, I used to annoy coaches by getting out and filling up my water bottle. That's it, just it, it was, excuse it was, Yeah, it was kind yeah. of an easy way out of a session. Yeah. I know lots of swimmers that used to do that. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> if, you are, if you want to be the model professional... Which Dan always have, has been. Have backups, have of course. Backup. Yeah, you should, have back, you should have backup goggles, backup hats. Yeah. Um, so I think girls use hats most of the time because because of their hair. But I know some guys that do wear hats. I think some pools, well. some pools actually, it's more Europe than yeah. the UK. When we've been on training camps, it's mandatory to wear swimming hats. Yeah, yeah. It's just a hygiene thing. Yeah, it's a hygiene it? thing. Yeah. So... There's, there is a difference between a training hat and a racing hat. I know at our swimming club, I was probably one of the first people with what you call nowadays a silicone dome hat. Oh, yes. So yeah. it's really kind of really heavy duty rubber mm. and there's no creases in but, it at yeah, all. Exactly, yeah. That's the um, problem with training hats. So you always have the ridges on the top. Yeah, so you? I wouldn't train in one of those things. It gives you a headache after about 10 minutes. Yeah, I know. I don't know how the girls do it. It's insane. No. Insane. Um, but yeah, the hats, goggles water bottle always have them in your training bag always keep them in your back of the car if you always want to go for a swim yes That's what I well tend to so do. you know when you said uh, you have a racing hat and a training hat yeah it's the same with the goggles i find as well yeah yeah i um i usually make the mistake of getting the really nice mirrored goggles which is kind of a rookie error because when for you're racing. training no for training, oh, for training. All, all the mirrored ones when you're yeah. training can't believe to see the board yeah, that's the problem. Can't see yeah. it at all. Yeah. Um, you might as well just get a little normal, not so good pair. Yeah, exactly. And then for the racing, then properly, like those ones, they're, they're quite yeah. good racing ones. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And anti fog is a myth. It is. <laughs> yeah. And don't that's, be sucked into that sale. Just technique. chlorine getting the goggles, you've got no hope. Yeah. yeah. Just, you know, some people like they sort of spit in the goggles, that sort of. I think that doesn't. Really I, th- I think it's more the sales thing. Whenever you see a sales thing, anti anti fog goggles. Oh, finally. My yeah. goggles aren't going to get steamed. They're going to get and steamed. And they up. never, never work. Yeah, just, yeah. just get some nice, clear goggles for training. Don't worry about how you look. You shouldn't really care about that. No. I mean, if you're training hard, then you're yeah. going to look a mess anyway. So. Yeah. Okay. So that's <laughs> training for drills done. Easy equipment. Yep. Now time to debate. Okay, let's go. Go on. Let's we got? prove our point. Kickboards. You'll notice yeah. we didn't mention this for drills or training. Mm. I personally hate them. I don't like them either, but I can understand why coaches use them. I can, but I can't. Because, it one, it's you hear this subject a lot of the time, it's like social kick. 
yes. kind of it distracts swimmers quite a lot from actually realizing what they're get, doing getting on with it it's just it's a cop out social kick is like a cheat way of a swim down isn't it yeah it's because every, every swimmer's done it it's everyone. kind of an easy part of a training session where no one's really concentrating everyone's just chatting yeah yeah what's the point you're not gaining anything from that you may as well just get out and go home Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it might be flushing, it depends what set you've done, but it might be flushing some lactic acid out of the legs, but at the same time, you might also do full stroke because then you get the upper body and lower body yeah. at the same time. So, yeah, you're right. It is pointless doing it that way. Um, so another point about kickboards, I know you suffered with a lot. Mm. I've suffered with it a lot more recently. Is kind of it, give, it gives me and you lower back issues. Lower back, yeah, definitely. Because it puts your yeah. body into a position... So when are you when in full stroke are your legs trying to break the surface while your head and shoulders are actually out of the water? Yeah. It arches your back and yeah, it does it, cause you injuries. And actually, because I've done so much of it, I'm you, now you, suffering a little bit because of it. I'm having to go to a chiropractor to try and fix the yeah, problem. So you're going what twice a month now? Twice a month, and you don't like train that. anymore. No. So, yeah. so this is where you need to look after your body a little bit more. And I just I just think it it injures you by doing it. And like you say, why when in any stroke? Would you have your hips low and then your upper body pretty much out of the water? Um, so this is primarily why on our YouTube channel, all of the drills and strokes and tutorials that kind of Dan gives us to put up. Yeah, they're there to replicate full stroke. Yeah, basically. exactly. Because yeah. Um, we kind of believe in enhancing your stroke as one. So why detach your, yes, le- yeah. your legs is, from your body position. This is where, you know, when we said pull back about pool boys earlier, so you're yeah. isolating your arms by, you know, not using your legs, and then it's yeah. the same thing with your kickboard. So I can kind of see, especially if you're doing, like, a hard kick set, you do want to isolate the legs. But it's just, I don't like the fact the body position is out. Yeah, you know? so this is why we did uh, our first ever video was swordfish kick. So we've, actually, we've given this to a few people on YouTube and Facebook, and they've yep. immediately come back to us and go, wow, mm. that has really isolated a problem in my swimming, that my body yeah. position is completely wrong. Yeah, I actually showed it to one of the swimmers who is, um, he's a Welsh national swimmer. Okay. And he, he can do swordfish, obviously, but he does, you know, the common faults that I said on it, where you kind of drop the leading arm to breathe. And he actually found it really hard to keep his leading arm yeah. still. Yeah, so, so, yeah, to do it properly, swordfish is actually quite tough. Yeah, so I, I'd find swordfish a lot more beneficial than using a kickboard. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. yeah. And you and don't... If I, was, if I was coaching or teaching, as I do, it's, I never use kickboards, ever, actually. No. So even that, even in learn why... to swim stages, I don't... Yeah. yeah, so that's why our kickboard has stayed on that wall. It doesn't move. We, we don't move that. That yep. stays there. Um, yep. It's purely for aesthetic purposes. It is right now, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it will stay there, too. Because there won't be any tutorials coming up where we use it at all. Yeah. yeah. So another item that kind of, it kind of does the same thing as a kickboard, but it's not, it's not really talked about. Okay. Drag shorts. Uh, it's the same See, sort of thing. I yes. used to use them a lot. Mm. But then through filming ourselves for this channel, yep. I noticed my hips were at considerably lower when I was using drag shorts. Yeah, that's right. I remember so, the very first thing, as well as the you know the paddles, uh, soft hands. I was saying earlier, yeah. engaging that's that was one thing. Then the second thing was that I I went there wearing drag shorts, and immediately after the first session, I was told to get rid of them. Yeah, and I, th- th- I, I think it's always throw them in a bin. It's there a psychological then. thing that they're yep. slowing you down so you can race faster. Yeah, it's a load of rubbish. Yeah, you're just putting yourself in a bad body position, and because you're training in them week in week out, yeah. your body gets it's, used to that bad it's, position. It's bad, bad practice. That's what yeah. it's called. Yeah, and yeah, you want your hips to be as high as possible in the water. That's why you see everyone who trains elite level swimmers, they just wear sort of spe- speedos. Yeah. That's it. You don't need there's, anything there's, else. There's no need for drag shorts. So no. As no. well as kickboard, firmly throw them in a bin. Yep. That's, that's something I've learned along the way, and mm. I just want to help you guys, and that's the reason why we want to bring up this sort of stuff, yeah. to help you guys exactly. do the best that you can do, you know? Uh, okay, so hopefully that is this week's topic covered. Swimming equipment done. Nothing too controversial, I don't think. Uh, I think we've made a good case for some of these pieces of equipment. If we have actually missed any pieces of equipment that you guys used, then please let us know in the comments below. Uh, we'll get back to you. Yeah, and we can always do another podcast of kind of what listeners. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. What, yeah. what listeners would recommend. Yes, yeah. Because we're, we're always open to learning as this kind of subjects has shown dan's actually taught me a lot i don't know what's that three things i don't know yeah, something wow. like that. <laughs> yeah. difference between uh someone who went to the elite level 
yeah. and someone who kind of stayed at district and county level. Well, there you go. Home club. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Right, should we go on to the news? Yeah, so swimming news this week. It's yeah. a good one. I enjoy this week. Bucks. Bucks, yeah. yeah. So Bucks is always enjoyable. If anyone doesn't know, the universities around Britain, yep. they all compete in various sporting events, and it's called Bucks. That's right, yeah. So this weekend is the swimming Yep. competition up in mm. Sheffield at Ponds Forge. That's right. It is the long course weekend. There is a short course lo- weekend later in the year? Uh, mm-hmm. No, I believe short course is first. Short oh, course okay. is in November time, I okay, think. So but it's definitely before Christmas. We, we missed that. We missed that one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, Bucks is generally, I've done it for one year. You coached it. I coached it's, it for three years. It's a years. really good fun weekend. Uh, depends which uni you go to. If you're at these, one of these big sporting unis like Loughborough, Bath, then it's quite a serious is it? competition. It is. Yeah. Oh, I <laughs> wouldn't know. Of, yeah, if you're at one of the other unis that isn't so sporty, I mean, Nottingham was quite... I went to Nottingham Trent and yeah. it's a top five sports university, but swimming wasn't Swimming was one, one of them. them. Yeah, because no. yeah, so, you did American football, I remember, actually. Yeah, I did yeah. American football, tried that for a little while. Yeah. They were one of the top teams in American football yeah. and rugby. Well, actually, because I coached at the University of Gloucestershire and swimming wasn't one of their main sports either. Mm. Um, and actually, I kind of helped them because they were unranked at the time. And I was there for three years and brought them up to, I think, the 11th in the country and actually became one of the biggest sports in the uni. I was like, ooh. Humble brag. Lovely, lovely, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Dan but, just showing off his coaching credentials here. But yeah, I mean, Bucks, if, it's a bit of a... It's a good social weekend. It is, yeah. Um, yeah. All of the unis, how many, how many were competing I think there's like 70-odd competing this weekend. I have the notes. It's 72. Oh, so, oh well, there you go. Names that go there every year. So I think this year we've got Siobhan O'Connor, we have Molly Renshaw's there, Matt Lickfield is there as James well. James Wilby. James Wilby will be So again, be these are people going there with their universities, the big, the big swimming universities. Yes, yeah. But for a lot of swimmers, it will be... I don't know. Kind of, for me, it was my first chance to go back racing after almost stopping swimming. You do get a lot of people that stop swimming for uni, and it's almost like a bit of a chance to get back to it and get yeah, back to the uni. Because, you know, I, especially when I stopped swimming, I didn't really miss the training for the first year, year and a half, but mm. I actually missed the competing side. So it's yeah. almost a good, a good opportunity to then go and race at Bucks. Yeah, so at university, kind of sports are seen as a big social kind yeah, of, so yeah, To yeah. get to know people because you're in a new environment. You, yeah. prob- I went there with probably one or two people from school. Mm. University is a big place. It's your chance to kind of branch out. Yeah, that's and right. that's why a lot of people take part in these Bucks sport events. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this swimming weekend is no different. It's a big social gathering. Mm-hmm. It's a good fun weekend. A lot of really fast racing. Yep. Yeah, so, so like I was saying with the um, Loughborough and Bath or the big sporting in East Sterling as well, actually, mm-hmm. um, they will be using this as a, like a, a, a platform for Tokyo. Okay, so it's, it's kind of like a gauge to see where they're at. How far is British champs away from the... It's about two uh, months March, away, isn't it? Yeah, two months away, I'd say. A- April. Yeah. April. Is it April British or champs sorry? is April because it's my birthday. Oh, well, there you that's, go. That's how I, I mean, I've written it down it. somewhere. Yeah. Just so, so this is, like we said last week with the Nice meet, it's people really starting to understand where their trainings hit them at. Yes. Where, where it's yeah. located them at. Yeah. And what I mean, they, if they're not swimming well now, then obviously something needs to change in training. If they're, if they're on target, then... Um, tapers yes. can begin? Um, probably not. Yes, I would say. Okay. Uh, maybe we're two months away from British trials, Some, maybe. Something to look at. Yeah, depends. Sprinters, I would say, you're all starting to taper off now. Distance swimmers, not so much. They still oh. have to keep going. Poor them. I know, well, <laughs> hey-ho, what do you do? Um, okay, so this week, we aren't going to finish with the tutorial because we haven't done one. No, it's challenge. It's, it's that challenge. Th- challenge of the month. Challenge of the month, yes, yeah. Well, so after last month's controversy where Dan was stripped <laughs> of his win... Because yeah. of a false because of, start. Yeah, well, there was a poll out. Was that on Instagram, Facebook? Instagram and Facebook. Both, both of them went in my favour. Yeah. Winner! Well. <laughs> yeah, so he's currently 1-0 on, uh, on the board. Yeah, uh, so this week's challenge. Yep. Do you want to let them I, know? Yeah, well, this week's challenge is uh, a bit like a, a lung capacity test. So I did want to do how many lengths we could do underwater, but Scott being Scott, he was never going to make that. Nope. So we decided to do wits instead. Um, Which turned out to be quite hard. It is quite hard, actually. <laughs> the amount of turns you have to do, is, it takes your breath yeah, away a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. So, um, yes, yeah, we definitely had a, an outright winner this week. So Yeah, we did. Um, so that is live on our YouTube channel now for you to check out. It um, is, yeah. 
if you want to give it a go as well, we'd always recommend a lifeguard just in case one competitive person pushes it too far. Yes, yeah. I actually, I was sponsored by a charity called, I can't remember what it's called now, Luke Jeffrey Memorial Trust, and it was all about shallow water blackouts. And oh. yeah, so yeah, there's something you didn't know as well. Something oh, else wow. you've learned. And this, uh, Luca's name, he used to do one length underwater, maybe even two lengths underwater at the end of every session. Okay. And the lack of oxygen in his brain then he passed out at the bottom of the pool. And, of course, the lifeguards, you see a swimming club swimming, you just think, oh, they'll be fine. And, um, wow. yeah, so unfortunately he didn't come around. So, yeah. Oh, wow, that's quite serious. Yeah, it was so, quite yeah, serious, yeah. Really, so definitely you are going to try around. this. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dan is our qualified lifeguard, mm. so we, we were all good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, definitely be careful if you are trying this one at home. Mm, yes, yeah. Um, but it was interesting, though, wasn't it? Yeah, for me. Yeah. <laughs> with, 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 without spoiling much. Yes, yeah. It was. Um, but you'll have to tune in. So it's now on uh, YouTube, like you said. On we upload it every Tuesday, don't on we? On the Propulsion Swimming Channel. That's right. Yes. Yeah. That's so lovely. for this week's show, um, is that it? Or are we going to ask everyone so. to do a five star review? Or we could do that. Yeah, that'd be nice. Crack so on. if if you've got to this point in the podcast and you've enjoyed it. Mm. And you think this has been fairly informative. I've really learned a lot, so I'm going to give it a five-star review myself. <laughs> because Dan's actually taught me a lot. Well, there you go. Um, I, mean, I can give a five-star review for myself if you want. Yeah, so on Apple Podcasts, if you could give us a five-star review, it would really help us kind of grow and move up the rankings. Yes, well, actually, you told me the other day that um, we had we had 15 countries before. Now, where are we up to? We are at 23. 23? We've got 23 countries. So you've gone up by 50% since last time. Amazing. Wow. There's some mass going on. Hang on. I think so. That's right. Yeah, I know I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. So you are. Yes, I know I'm right. Oh, wow. <laughs> How you have you, you really ended up a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that has brought us to the end of this week's podcast. We have. If you want to catch us next week, we are actually going to predict the world records that we think are going to fall in the next year. Year or, or just the Olympics. Should we do both? Yeah. Let's do yeah. that. I mean, Olympics is the main one. After Olympics, there probably won't be any world records going. No, but there might be so. some at, like, trials. So, Oh, at trials. Yes, yeah, should yeah. we do it for the year then? Let's yeah. do it for the okay. year. So next week, yeah. we will predict our world records to go. Hopefully, we will be spot on on all of them. Well, let's hope so. Um, but for now, we will see you in seven days. And we'll catch you on the next one. <laughs>